Right, well, I'm on a slightly different uh, walk today. Um, it's a lovely day, about going to be about 30 degrees, I think, so I'm doing it fairly early in the morning. Um, let's see how we get on. Right, well, we're starting the walk here, which is at the end of uh, Cotton and Close in East Morling, heading towards the uh, railway track. Coming up to the stile now, and heading down the footpath, uh, which is a little bit overgrown, um, to go underneath the railway line. Uh, this section ties in with my other vlog, my first one. Big difference, I'm trying out my old Samsung S10. Uh, on this occasion to see how we get on with filming with this it's not a gimbal it's a selfie stick with a remote uh, bluetooth attachment for taking the videos so we'll see how we get on quite overgrown here as you can see going up the path the other side of the railway Sure how the battery is going to last. It's quite an old phone, and I don't think the battery is in the best of order. I made the mistake of putting shorts on, brush me with that, to put longs on in future. But turning right at the top, heading off now towards Well Street. What I'll do is uh, if the battery gives up halfway around, I'll switch to my S20, which has got a good battery on it. Right, coming up to the junction of footpaths, um, we're carrying straight on here down to the uh, mill stream. And that's the other footpath down there. Be interesting to see how stable the uh, film is. I've got stability on the uh, camera, uh, but obviously with it being a selfie stick, it's a little bit different from a gimbal. And we'll see how we get on. Down towards the stream now. Beautiful little wooded area. Been coming down here for 35 years. Uh, normally with a dog, you can see some of the stream there through there. You do see kingfishers here. And I think they were water voles, but whether they're still here or not, I don't know. Right, coming out of the dark area now towards the stream which is uh, very pretty you can see here a guy called Mr Brown used to live here whether he still lives on that I don't know I do because that, that's his old car there, but it doesn't look like it's moved for quite a while. May not be around. That is the uh, the house next to the stream. Absolutely beautiful. Don't know how old it is. I don't think it's that old, but it looks really nice. Water here from somewhere. Looks like we've got a burst water main. Yeah. There's all the orchards. Goes up towards West Morning. 
we're going to go this way. Going up to a very uh, old house, which somebody once told me belonged to Oliver Cromwell's Chancellor. I don't know whether that's true or not. Anybody who's watching this, let me know. Let me know. Used to be a very nice lady, lived there, did a lot of gardening. You can see the house. Very, very pretty house. Some lovely houses along here. Most of this area here think has been designated for housing sadly like my other vlog it is a never-ending uh, saga this part of the world that they just keep destroying the Kent countryside to build more and more houses crazy a beautiful little cottage yeah, very pretty, very peaceful, a little bit out away from reality, I guess, but that's no bad thing. Yeah, some very pretty houses here. Some sort of a press or something here made from by WT Hollands from Merriworth goodness knows what it is it looks like a might be an apple press or something looks like it so going back down the road there so we're going up one thing I like so far about this selfie stick is the Bluetooth remote where you can switch the video on and off uh, on from the handle. I think that's a brilliant little gizmo and one that will definitely be my armory from now on. Whether I use selfie stick or a gimbal, uh, no one remains to be seen, but certainly so far so good. The other thing I like about using your phone is you can see what you're videoing quite clearly. You've got a massive screen in front of you. Whereas with the small action cams, you can get a screen, but it's not always visible because it's attached to something. Uh, this is uh, Pikey Lane, where there's going to be a lot of building up there. Orchard, nice house. It used to belong to somebody who was mates with Prince Harry, so I believe. Uh, anyway, we're going down here, but as I was saying, yeah, you can see what you're videoing. I really like that. Uh, there is a, an attachment to the gimbal where you can link up to your action camera and put your mobile phone on it and so you can see what you're doing. But uh, I quite like this method. Maybe simplicity is the key. One thing about walking on roads is you are supposed to face the traffic so walking on the right hand side now I'm not quite sure of the logic behind that but that's what they say so that's what I will do interesting sign there saying dogs running free obviously designed to scare you I suppose they are a little bit isolated here and uh, anything they can deter potential burglars with is worth doing. There's a nice little footpath through there, it takes you now up to Kings Hill. When I first moved here there was nothing there, it took you up and you were just in Kent countryside, surrounded by apple trees. Nice house there. There's a really interesting house coming up which the last time I walked here hadn't been developed but it looks like something out of the 1930s 
We're very close to Westmoreland Airfield, or as was, which was used in World War II fairly extensively. And I like to imagine that uh, Guy Gibson or somebody like that uh, lived in this place. But as you can see, the windows are, they haven't put any double glazing in. It's just the original windows by the looks of things, which I think is quite nice. They haven't written them out. And it looks just probably as it looked when it was first built. Nice house, very nice. Probably worth a fortune. Just gone past a house, which was, I haven't videoed it, but which was very big to start with and they're making it even bigger and you, and you just wonder how much space do people need uh, I guess if you've got plenty of money you can do what you want there's a house here on the left that was uh, a self-build uh, I watched it being built from scratch and uh, very nice it is too. Yeah, got big solid panels on it now. It's a lovely, yeah, lovely house. All built by themselves. Really nice house, very pretty. Nice brickwork, absolutely enormous. A lot of people get the money from for these places. Look at that typical Kentish tile style house. Very nice. Right, coming up now to a park home. Very nice upmarket park home if you want to live in a in a uh, park home I recommend this place. Expensive down there, but lovely and peaceful until they start building around it. Of course, it's interesting. I've not been up here for quite some time, but this is a new build, and the ones behind it are so very nice, too. I don't know they're for sale yet, doesn't look like they're quite finished yet. I don't know how many there are. Looks like there's this one big one at the front and then a smaller one at the back. Or maybe that's just the garages and the offices. Yeah, it looks like. Oh no, it could be another house. Yeah, it is. Yep. Now we're coming up to the main junction now. Uh, this is the road that goes from East Malling up to. Uh, Teeson and watering very, very big. It's a nice walk up there. Uh, takes you towards the quarry. We'll continue on this bit for the time being. It's quite a lot of road involved on this one, which is not good, but generally speaking, it's pretty quiet, especially today, which is a Sunday. Um, um, quite happy to do it. See that house up there built 1905. There have been houses around here for quite some time, but they've managed to avoid significant change so far. But uh, for how much longer, I don't know. This is an uh, interesting house. It used to be a pub. They've still got the pub sign out. But the amount of land this house has got is just ginormous. They've got a little golf course in the back. I presume the pub was called The Woodman. It would seem significant. Uh, they've also got a swimming pool. Yeah, that's a different one from what the rest of us lean into. There's a footpath here that goes down through East Morning Research land. Nice 
little walk down there because as you can see it goes right down to the rocks estate which is where you can see the houses in the distance and then you can see the north downs further down continuing on one thing I've noticed is that the with the Bluetooth gizmo the screen stays on which is a little bit worrying because it probably means it's hammering the battery I'm not quite sure if I can do anything about that anyway. van bombing past. This is what annoys me when you go out walking. Arseholes doing that. They've obviously pulled up and just shoved their sandwich bags out the window and driven off. Maybe I should uh, bleep that out. But anyway, that's how I feel. This is the entrance to a rather impressive house. Got all the electronic gates on it and the CCTV. It seems to be a feature of rich people when they have big houses that the first thing they want to do is put a big iron gate on it that's electronically operated and CCTV. Uh, I think they're a little bit paranoid. But, you know, it's their money, they can afford it, I suppose, do it. It's very pretty little walk just here this bit coming up to a left hand turn and it really is starting to get hot i think we're going to be up to 30 today which the beginning of june it's got to be some sort of a record i think clearly they have horses here what i was worried about was whether our would be get annoyed with the weight of carrying the selfie stick but if you don't film for too long and then just drop it down by his side it seems to be okay beautiful view we've walked along here many times during lockdown just thought I'd do a uh, reverse camera shot uh, just to show you that I am the man with the hat and uh, I do exist so see you later and just do the shot of the beautiful Kent countryside really is glorious absolutely beautiful pleased I've been such a long time since I've had shorts on I'd forgotten I have a little pocket for my mobile phone so I've just put it in it and very useful so I'm always worried about it jumping out when you're walking but yeah just thought I'd mention that the big house there look looks like it's got a swimming pool something attached to it. I don't know, it might be something to do with horses. A big house. One of the things I notice, probably through jealousy, when I'm out walking is how many wealthy people there are out and about living in extraordinarily large houses with several millions. Um, here comes a cyclist at high speed, here come two cyclists high speed yeah just to continue on the some of the houses are just breathtaking and, uh, so there is plenty of money around now probably they represent a minority as in any society you've got very rich, rich and then average and then poor like me <laughs> rich in other ways though <laughs> not always about money is it happiness 
I've met a lot of rich people who are nasty pieces of work, to be honest. And by the same token, I've met some rich people who are absolutely wonderful. Right, coming to a little junction here. Um, many years ago, this used to be a footpath that would lead into the uh, woods there. But the woods have sadly no longer exist, been obliterated uh, by Gallagher for a, Mr. Gallagher for a quarry, which is fair enough, it is needed. So I'm going to go left down here. You can go right and it takes you all the way around the quarry. But this uh, is um, the way I'm going to go. This is interesting, it's a little insect box. Um, you do see these out and about in various places. I think they, they do it to uh, look at the, uh, you know, what kind of bugs they've got in the area and, uh, you know, whether they're multiplying or decreasing and whether they're the right sort of bugs I guess. I used to find a lot of those out in the orchards when I was walking around there. Uh, possibly I think part of a research program which would be done by East Morlin Research who uh, are the most likely candidates to be doing that. Okay, on the right is a quarry very quiet at the moment, um, but if you come during the week, there's usually quite a lot of noise. There's another one of those boxes there. Look, they're clearly each one's numbered. They're clearly uh, looking into the insect population in this uh, area. Yeah, to be. Uh, to Gallagher, he's made a nice job of this, it's really has matured, getting better every year. Really quite a pleasant walk down here. There's a lovely view across to a, a large house which I mentioned in my first vlog, which is over there. So we're on the footpath just over this way. that way in a second just down here there is a um, the, foot, the footpath carries on down under the bridge the bridge that was built as part of uh, the where Mr. Guy goes to train his horses I think I think that's correct uh, I haven't seen horses on there for quite some time so I don't know whether he's still doing it or not uh, this is where we drop down underneath the race track on the training track, whatever it is, the right description, I don't know. But yeah, uh, that's where his horses go across there. Shows what you can do when you want to. I think they've got cameras on this. Not any vehicles coming down has to go through the traffic light system. There used to be posts in the middle of the road here to stop motorcyclists or something coming through. They seem to have disappeared for the time being, they're under there somewhere. But then we appear at the other side. Um, that over there used to be a massive quarry, uh, just behind that hedge. And it's now been filled in completely. We've got, that footpath goes up, up to right around the quarry. And this one goes down to a stretch that's on my other vlog, which 
you've done before. But I'll carry on filming, uh, even though I've done it before. It's the entrance into the washing plant, which I mentioned on my uh, vlog. Um, the first one. And this is the footpath that I came out of. If you go down there, it takes you up towards the railway, then back through the research. But I'm just going to carry on down here today. Not make the walk a bit longer, you can go around there. As I say, I've done this bit before. I might go a slightly different way when I get to the bottom. That's not a bad idea. Just vary it up a bit. I'll turn left at the bottom instead of carrying straight on. See you at the bottom. What I might do in future videos, it's a bit late now because I'm halfway through, start looking at the different wild plants and flowers there are. There's the path I've just walked down. And there's this, I've not a clue what they are, but maybe I should start identifying them uh, to make them walk a little bit more informative. Several of horses over there. Looking very contented indeed. The smell of creosote is quite strong here on the fence. I filmed this before but I'm going to film it again. Uh, there's a, a double-decker bus in this bloke's back garden, <laughs> or front garden actually, which we will be walking past today because I'm going to do a left. There's the bus stop. So, coming up to some rather nice flowers. These are not easy, difficult to identify. They're poppies. They're large poppies as well. Enormous. I think they're poppies, maybe they're not. <laughs> but they, these are lovely as well. What's we'll getting them ID'd? Right, instead of going down there, which is where we went last time, I'm going to go up here, Kilmbarn Lane. Right, there's the bus. Absolutely fascinating. Yeah. Been there as long as I can remember. We've been walking around here for 30 odd years. So. Yeah, a long time. Quite an interesting thing to have in your um, front garden. Anyway, here we are. Everybody to their own. Yeah, this road is leading up to the rocks. Um, the other side of the rocks, and I'll, what I will do is I'll nip through on a footpath through some fields and then into the research, uh, East Morning Research, and then back through the Rocks Estate. And a slightly different way from where I went last time. You can see the houses over there. Now on the right side of the road, in case anybody is coming down. Generally speaking, it's pretty quiet this road, but when uh, a vehicle does come down, it's pretty tight, so you've got to get out of the way. Yeah, this, as you can see, is quite narrow. There would be literally nowhere for me to go if a large vehicle came down. You just have to stop and let me go past. That's weird. There seems to be a, a plate down there. Why would there be a plate there? I would. Never mind. Little passing point here, people have made. The other uh, advantage, of course, of using your phone, if you have a Google account, which I have, got a storage. Uh, plan with them and uh, Although the phone I'm using doesn't have a SIM card in it at the moment um, 
just log on to Wi-Fi when I get it back and it will upload all the films that I'm taking eventually up to um, my Google photo account um, whereas if you've got an action cam you've got to transfer them over you can do it by you can do it by uh, Wi-Fi um, or it, probably what's easier is to do by a USB cable and just transfer the lot over I know that the action cam that I've got a Surfola, a fairly cheap one which I bought deliberately cheaply because I didn't want to spend a lot of money until I worked out what, what I was doing um, if you use the Wi-Fi to transfer the files it takes forever so I ended up scrapping that and just uh, beaming it, uh, sorry, um, wiring it across with the USB and uh, it was a lot quicker but I think something like a GoPro uh, I think even some of them have their own cloud uh, you, you can subscribe to I'm not sure somebody can't spell Engodgement I think that says Engodgement Dave Simmons Engodgement hmm. Oh well <laughs> Dave Oh yeah, Dave mates need to go to school Looks like they've got uh, peas or beans in there and they're doing well doing very well There's the rocks, which will, I will be approaching very shortly. This is an interesting little row of houses here that we're coming up to. Sorry, I switched off there because there was a car coming. Yeah, look, I wonder if it was a school or something. There's probably, or well, could have been work, farm workers' cottages. There's quite a few of them. I don't know if there's a date on one of them. Might be some uh, there's houses up there, Easter fields. Let's get out of the way here. You get, you get, people use this as a rat run, and uh, the, um, it can get when you get a couple of cars coming down, it can get a bit tricky to get past. Generally not a problem really, but with it being a narrow road uh, can cause issues. Yeah. Now this is Sweets Lane. Um, now then, which way shall I go? Well, that road is called Easter Fields. And hidden away there, there is a little Believe it or not, a little post box. <laughs> Amazing. I wish where shall I go? Uh, go? I'll go this way towards the rocks. It can make a lot of difference. And then at the end I'll turn left and then uh, get onto the field. The field's full of crops, so probably I'm doing the best thing. But they usually, if responsible farmers, will make sure that the footpath is uh, maintained. Although I've been on plenty of walks where the farmer couldn't carry down about uh, the footpath, just plowed straight through it, and uh, in fact, in some cases, forces you to go around the edge. And it's, other places we've been where they physically put barriers there to try and make you uh, not go through their land and one of the other things I've found is when people, rich people, buy a house that's got a footpath going through their land one of the first things they'll try and do is divert it around the edge so the footpath that's been there for 
probably hundreds of years they don't like so they immediately get one of their mates on the council to approve a move of footpath but that's what the people do got plenty of money that's lovely isn't it look at the ducks there and there lovely those are irises i think oh the ducks have made a run for it got them scared yeah beautiful i think i don't think there's any fish in there it looks pretty muddy but uh the jemima duck and co obviously liked it right coming up to junction here four acres that goes up to the other footpath that um i used last time when i walked an interesting old lamppost here which is quite old and they've actually built around it and it's not functioning but that looks very very old i think it's a lamppost it might be a vent shaft who knows anyway they've not knocked it down which i find quite interesting That's four acres uh, i'll find out what that is going down on the edge of the rocks estate now and then I'll go uh, onto the fields. Um, nice little estate, this. Nice place to live. Uh, unfortunately, as a, is a recurring theme in my blogs, is uh, house building. And uh, rich people I think I mentioned that quite a lot you know but yes yeah, really lovely and peaceful here very nice if you can get a house here especially if you've got a view out across the fields it's a mix of I think they used to be council houses and new ones they look like they were ex council houses to be honest which are probably all privately owned now a very nice acquisition they are too here's a, a new one with some little drive going up yeah. somewhere along here i can get through onto the footpath i think this could be it i think this is it yeah i think this is it just here And then I can go along here. This uh, this bit here is prone to flooding, so the crops haven't done very well. Uh, the ones up further up are doing have done okay. But I know this bit here does get very boggy. Those are poppies. Let's get fly off me. And let's see. A little bit of a footpath on the side, but I don't think it's there almost deliberately. It's just people have walked on it. There they have. Charming. Why do people do it? Take your litter home. That's a message the government used to get out. You never see anything on the TV anymore but those adverts government sponsored adverts used to be on the TV all the time take your litter home and uh, a bit of a scourge of our time oh, well I've changed hands now I'm now doing this with my left hand because my right hand's starting to ache so I mean now been at it for an hour and a bit uh, it is starting to take its toll a little bit on my wrist and uh, one of the big advantages of a action cam is they don't weigh anything they're very very lightweight so that's a uh, obviously the main difference i would say between using a phone 
and using an action cam. Um, I will try an action cam on a selfie stick, I think. Um, the trouble is you never quite, well on the one I've got, you're never quite sure whether you're videoing or not. Whereas on this one, I'm absolutely dead certain that I am. Right, going through some prickly bits here and stingy bits, which is bad news. Bad news. Bad news. If I get through without a sting, it'll be a miracle. Hmm, done it. Right, here we go. Onto this bit. I don't know what, I think it's rapeseed, this. Um, which they use for cooking oil and putting into diesel. Um, the EU has stipulated that any diesel that's used in the UK should have a certain percentage of vegetable oil in it. It's primarily rapeseed oil, I think. And uh, I think that's the same with what the E10 petrol, I think, has 10% uh, biofuel, as they like to call it, in it. You can see some extremely expensive houses up there. Probably belong to footballers or something. There was nothing, nothing there until about three or four years ago, and then those massive things appeared. Coming up to junction on this walk uh, in the research. This is all research land I think still might be farmers I'm not sure might be farmers land that bit there's a footpath goes all the way up to the road that I uh, was on earlier and I did indicate where that footpath was coming down here so I've joined up on that and I'm now going up here to uh, the rocks and these are the uh, very large houses expensive houses which you've got here belonging to very rich people. Going up to a gate here, which there used to be a gate here, but somebody's nicked it, I think. A small gate has disappeared. So, just a gap now. Uh, but they did at one time have a proper gate here, but somebody's lifted that by the looks of things. God knows why. There it is, gated community, private, keep out, no doubt, CCTV everywhere. That's what they like. Makes them feel secure. There's a uh, nice host house conversion, very pretty. Very, very pretty. I love it. Very nice indeed. And uh, these houses are, some of these houses have enormous gardens. Uh, a little bit further on out of that massive gardens, I think, back again. And uh, I'm going to join up on the road that I've been on before on my first vlog. I pointed this walk out, so this is where it connects uh, to the Rocks Road. It'll be interesting to see if I uh, get any buffeting from the wind on my phone got quite a lot on my uh, action camera. Lots of poppies there. Right, here we go. This bit you've seen before if you looked at my first one. Uh, I'm going to have to start going further afield eventually, but I said I'm learning. Quite a big lot to learn actually. Uh, it's Sunday, so there's plenty of cyclists out. Not as many as there used to be during lockdown. In lockdown, we used to walk along and when cyclists came past. We stopped breathing. <laughs> they were puffing and blowing as they were going along on their bike. And, uh, didn't want to breathe in any potential COVID germs, did we? 
anyway there's a picnic in the park on in this morning today where they've got live music and stalls on and people are invited to go down put a blanket on the floor and uh, their seats and listen to the music for free there's CC Travel there, Colin Cooper it stands for used him to take us to uh, the British Open uh, yeah, very good service can't really see any more because I've been down here I'm going to go down to the station make it a little bit different so we're doing the same route all over again so I'm coming back up uh, onto the rocks road there's Mr Cooper's van uh, quite difficult to book him he's very popular but, you know there's his mobile number if you need to and as I say he took us to the open at Sandwich there was uh, three of us and uh, picked us up very reliable a slight problem getting in because there was so much traffic but we just got out and walked the rest of the way uh, one of these that used to be a pub there it's now been converted obviously as, you, obviously as you can see into a house but that was a pub I'm pretty certain that was a pub you know, Jim used to drink my father-in-law um, station is coming up here the station is unmanned and they have a ticket machine they have a ticket machine which is basically next to useless most of the time because it keeps getting vandalized and when you order your tickets uh, online it gives you the option of getting them printed at the station uh, half the time you won't be able to do it because the machine is US let's have a look there's the steps up to the platform which is up there uh, I hope they never get rid of this station it's extremely useful the nearest one we've got is West Morning was a bit of a drag let's have a look see if it's been vandalized oh yes it has just look at the state of that completely useless what a waste of time. Uh, this is the uh, main road that we crossed it earlier, coming down the station from Teeson and Waterwingbury. This is a very busy road, which goes down to single file. Uh, there's very often jams during the week um, you can get real though especially when the dustbin men come uh, and block it up completely and you get queues all the way down to the A20 uh, we're coming down to uh, park Fairly old houses along here. Um, and what can't say is I particularly like to have a house here with this road. Uh, would have been very pleasant 50, 60 years ago, but not now. The amount of traffic that we get. Uh, the King and Queen pub down there. My last vlog started from there. And uh, so we're coming from a different way, quite a nice sort of a Georgian style house. Um, a little row of cottages here, but literally right on the road. I think they've got fairly good sized gardens at the back, but it's not my cup of tea at all. Um, uh, I think the picnic in the park will be starting. Within the next couple of hours, I should imagine. Right, I'm going down Mill Street, past the King and Queen pub. Uh, it's a very old pub. 
this one of the this these all used to be shops at one time we've got a, a tiffin but that's been restaurants and various things over the years since we've been here it was a an indian at one time where it unfortunately got closed down because they were employing um, illegals to work in it uh, one of these was a butcher or something and i think they had its own slaughterhouse might be the one down here um, these houses are very old and i think this might be the one i honestly don't know for certain but uh, i think it was this one if uh, well, you can see how it's pretty old and overhangs the uh, pavement and the same the other two are pretty old as well I don't know what the date is, but I wouldn't, I'm guessing maybe 17, 16, 17 hundreds, something in that region. Anyway, let's see. a new build. Actually I think there was a house there before and they demolished it and built that in its place. Uh, this is quite an old house there. It's been there for donkey's years. And this one here is the one that backs on to my house. And uh, that used to be one house. It got split to an absolutely enormous gardens go all the way down uh, alongside my garden and there's the other house so that's two houses and then the garden was so big they built another house there so they split the garden into three pieces actually four because I got a bit of it as well that used to be the jail there, the police house with the jail uh, and somebody bought it, converted it into a bigger house, but that building there was the jail, I think. Uh, fortunately, we've got a big pile on here. Let's see what's happening on the picnic in the park, see if there's what activities going on. Oh yeah, you can see people already starting to muster. People getting their spots preparation there we are so there's the music stage starting up and uh, a few stalls and what have you all getting ready for action approach the end of the walk um, which I will put together uh, sometime this week and publish on YouTube um, this area here used to be a school and they've got a place down there for people with learning disabilities I think or issues and all this here with these new houses this used to be a school primary school uh, sadly no longer but the houses they built very nice uh, that's an enormous house uh, and somewhere around here is a memorial to a child that got killed. Oh, there it is. Little cross there. Yeah, just there. Child got killed crossing the road here. So this used to be the farm track. Um, and this was the track before the. Uh, built the railway and used to go straight across. Right, well that is about it, so I'll sign off. I'll just turn it around. Yep, that's as much as I'm going to do today. It's very hot. I'm going to have a shower, cool off, and then I might play around with it. But anyway, hope you've enjoyed it. See you next time. <laughs>